let's begin folks so we're going to start with the horns on this one um, what we're going to do is create a clear water wash over the entire shape of each horn and then we're going to plug in some color so you can see that I've loaded up my brush with clear water and I'm just going around the entire outs, uh, in, outside inside shape of the horn and I'm going to do both of them and then I'm going to leave that sinking for a little bit and then I'm going to mix up my color and drop some colors in there Okay, so we're going to go in with some colour now. So I've mixed up some lemon yellow and some red then. You can see me just adding a bit more red. And what we were aiming for is like a mid-tone warm colour. Um, and it's going to be quite intense. We want to actually get some colour in, in those horns. So I'm going to start by putting that colour down first. And you can see me, I'm just running over there um, in that area and dropping in the colour into that water wash that we put down on those horns to start with. So we're going to do that on both of the horns and then we're going to plug in some darker colours over the top. So when you're painting a watercolour you want to work light to dark, so you want to plug in those lighter colours and then work into the darker ranges after. Um, and that's to give a good amount of depth into a painting. So there you can see me, you don't need to be sort of making paint marks here, more just loading up your brush with that colour that you've mixed and then dropping it into the colour wash. And then we're going to go in and start to build up the tonal uh, contrast. So here I'm mixing some Payne's Grey and then I'm going to add some red and some lemon yellow to it to create a sort of mid-tone that I'm going to just scoop along the underside to create a shadow under that uh, horn to give it some form. So that's Payne's Grey, some brilliant red or just any red colour and a bit of lemon yellow to create a sort of browny grey colour for the underside of those horns. And now what we're going to do, once we've got those two sort of mid-tone shades in, we're going to add a little bit of red to that mixture you're working with. So in there now, that is a bit of lemon yellow, some red, some Payne's grey, and then with a little bit more of that red colour, just add it in. And, and what I'm doing is just applying it to the underside of those horns to give the sense that it's a 3D shape. So to give the shading of those cone shapes of the horns. So I'm just plugging it in there, just under the side of the horns and you can see the paper's still a little bit wet and so it's merging and bleeding out nicely and then we're going to go stacking it even darker so i've got paint gray and burnt ember now so i'm going to mix a really nice rich color here so you've got paint gray and burnt ember like i said and i've probably a little bit more heavier on the burnt ember side of things to give it a warmer tone and the paper's pretty much drying out now um, but it's still bleeding slightly allowing that water color to bleed so i'm going to stroke in some detail of the horns so you can see that I'm loading up that browny grey colour and I'm just creating a sense of texture in those horns just by stroking out that colour into the pigments we've already got down. And what you'll find is that because the paper is still damp, when you make these marks, they'll once you put them in, they'll sort of bleed and soften out, which creates a really nice watercolour effect. And again, notice where I'm putting those colours. It's just towards the underside of those horns and that's to give a sense of... Um, shape and form. Just in there, that is a bit of burnt sienna I'm adding in there. That's a really richy orange colour. So that's burnt uh, sienna and Payne's grey now and I'm mixing it into quite an intense syrupy colour and I'm adding in more of those details. And you can see that mark making there. You want to um, sort of give the impression of the rivets of the horns and all those grooves that you get in that lovely texture. And you can see how dark I'm going now, it's really giving a sense of shadow. Okay, so I just thought I should say something about that water wash we put down. So we originally put it down quite heavily, so it's quite glossy, there's lots of water on the paper. And now what's happened, as we've layered in these colours, that water has absorbed. Um, and that's working to our advantage. So basically, as we're stacking in these darker colours here, because the paper is drier, it means that the colour doesn't disperse so far. 
um, and create that big sort of watercolour splodgy mess. And it also means that when we're stacking in these darker tones, the colour remains more intense um, because it's not being diluted by that water that's on the page. So it's really about um, anticipating when things are drying and how intense the colours will be and then playing that to your advantage. So the detailing of the horns, you need to be doing this when it's not completely dry but a little bit dry so you still get the tooth of the paper and you can still get some of those details in. And now, as we're coming to the end of these horn sections, I am just going in with some almost pure paint grey mixed with a tiny little bit of burnt amber, and just to really bring out some of those very dark shades. The secret of this is not to go overkill, like don't cover the entire horn with like a dark shadow, um, but just pick up tiny little bit of details here and there, and it will make them sort of pop out. And that's it, folks, for that section. Well done! Okay, so now what we're going to do is tackle the undercoat of the fur. So we're going to do this using two puddles or two colours of paints really. So first you're going to mix up a red and a lemon yellow. And you can see me doing that there on the palette. So I've got a big splodge of red and a big puddle of um, lemon yellow that I'm adding to it. And then next to that on your palette you want to mix in a red and a burnt sienna. And the reason we're doing this is to create two different um, tones of this warm red colour. We're going to have a darker one which will be the burnt sienna colour and then the lighter one which is the first colour that we mixed. Next to those two puddles, we're going to make a really weak wash of that lemon yellow and red. So you can see there, I put loads of water in there, and that's to create the lightest tone in this painting. So that is a really light watery wash of that lemon yellow and red. So you can see here the colour tones we've just mixed up. So in that first one you've got the burnt sienna and red, and then you've got a more of a red heat hue, and then that light wash that we made at the end. And then you can see there on that chart the varying degrees of water I've added, uh, and that's to make it lighter. So they're loosely the colours you're aiming for. So we're going to move on to the head area now, and what we're going to do is start by creating a clear water wash where we went all of that lovely pigment we just mixed up to go. So I'm basically starting with the side of the face and then I'm moving up into the head area and just slightly on the edge of the nose. But I'm not going into the eyeball area or on the tip of that nose. I'm just looking at where the light colour is on the fur and I'm putting the water down and then I'm going to drop the colour in after. Okay, so once we've got that water wash down and we've just let it sink in a little bit, you can see it's still quite glossy on the paper, so it hasn't fully absorbed. And we want that in this initial stage, so the colour's very sort of washy and does all that lovely stuff that watercolour does. So I've mixed in there, that is the lemon yellow and red in a really weak watery wash. So you can see it's a really pale colour. And what we're going to do is get in this pale colour first and then we're going to build up tonal variation by plugging in some of those darker shades that we mixed earlier. Um, so you can still see here, I'm just working my way around. I'm starting with the side of the face and then up into the forehead area and I'm just plugging in that light wash colour. And like I said, we're going to stack in those darker colours later. So don't worry too much about the paint where it's going right now. All you're doing is creating an undercoat to build up some nice intense rich blue colours after. I'm 
then guys, what we're going to do is stack in that burnt sienna, lemon, yellow and red colour just around the eyeball socket area. And that's to create the impression of that shadow. And if you look at your reference um, photo of the painting, you'll see where this colour is. So it's really about now building up some colour intensity. And you'll notice as well, what I'm doing is I'm brushing always in the direction of the fur. So when you're mark making, even though the paper is very wet and the um, pigments are sort of dispersing everywhere, I am moving my brush strokes down in the direction of the fur. And this is so that once you are finished, um, overall all these tiny mark making will add into texture. Um, and you'll see this develop as you go along. So don't worry if you're putting a stroke down of the watercolour and it's then sort of dispersing everywhere. Have faith, it will lead to a lovely texture. And here I am just stacking in a little bit more of that colour intensity. And it's really about following the intuition here. Look at that reference painting, see where those dark bits are and then stack in those colours. Build up that lovely form and shape. So guys, for that really shaggy red ear of that Highland Q, what I've done is I've painted onto dry paper with a really quite intense mix of burnt sienna and red, and there's a little bit of ye lemon yellow in there. And I have essentially just put in the mass of the ear, but stroking down and given the sense that it's really furry. So towards the end, you can see I've used the very tip of my brush to put that hair hair mark um, and the sense of it's really flowing down and really quite shaggy. And then just off to the left hand side there on that other ear, you'll notice I'm just indicating it by putting in a dark splodge of paint. There's nothing hard or concrete about that form. It's more just to give the impression that it's a shadow on the other side. Um, so you, you can see how you just need to give a little bit of detail but not too much and that's the key to this. It's not painting every single hair follicle and shaggy bit of fur. It's really getting the right tone of variation correct and then indicating detail. Add in a few strokes of fur here and there. So guys, what we've done, we've added in some blocks of colour with that darker shadow area, we went around the eye and then we put in some colour around the side of the face to build up those layers. What we're going to find now is that everything becomes a bit of a splodgy mess. So we really want to start to be putting some detail in. And we can do this in fear by essentially just highlighting and removing little areas in the darker colours that we've put down. So to do this, what you do is use a flat brush and you rinse it off in water and then dab the excess water off by blotting it on some paper. And then you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just stroking out some highlights. So I'm pulling some areas out and I'm always working in the direction of the fur. And then I'm removing the excess pigment that I'm picking up off that paper and blotting it on some um, tissue paper that I've got ready just at the side of me. And what we're doing here, we're just pulling out some detail in. We're not going overkill, we're just sort of choosing some areas to pull out some of that furry detail to give the sense of depth to the fur. And what you'll realise when you're doing this is that you don't need to pull out every single hair detail. All you need to do is just pull out a few little bits here and there. 
and it will be a really effective way to build up layers and texture in fit without having to paint individual hair which would be incredibly tedious. Okay, so once we've got in those background colours, we're going to put in the area around the eye now. So, first, what you want to do is just re-wet the area to make it workable. And so, with a clean brush and some clean water, just go over the entire area around that eye where you want that lovely warm shadow to be. So check out the reference painting here, you'll see the shadow and what I mean. And then you're going to mix some burnt sienna, burnt ember and a tiny, tiny little bit of lemon yellow to create a really warm, rich colour which is going to form the base of the shadow of that um, eye socket area. And what we're trying to do is just give a focal point, so that darker colour around the eye will draw the viewer into that area which is the main, sort of main feature, it's where the eye is peering out. So there I am just stacking in that lovely rich colour and I'm using quite a load of brush and the area is already wet so when I'm dropping in that colour the pigment is dispersing. If you find that it's uncontrollable, um, you can switch your brush off and remove any excess around the edges. And also here, using the same tone, you can sort of build up some more of that fur detail. I'm just adding little elements here and there, darkening bits as I go around. Um, but really keeping in the same colour palette to keep everything a little bit harmonious and to keep the sense that those tones are all sitting in the same area of the field. Um, and it's really about just using your creative license. Don't feel too het up or where the colours are going, as long as you're getting the main forms and shadows in. And it's really about stacking in colours, removing them with highlights and getting texture, then adding another layer, and just this back and forth process of adding pigment, taking it away to create highlights, stacking pigments back on. Um, but always work in the direction of fur. And what I mean by that is you want to create your brush marks um, to replicate the shape and form of the fur. And this will eventually um, mean that all that lovely detail and that shaggy sort of fur is looking realistic. If you were to paint in the direction of all just straight lines, it would look like a very static painting. So have a look at your reference photo in the painting. Look where those hairs are flowing and try and imitate that in your brush marking and it will be a much more effective painting. And finally, what we're going to do is just from the very edge of that eyeball, we're going to add a tiny bit of potter's pink. 
Um, if you haven't got Potter's Pink, just red and white will do, any pink colour. And you just want to place it on the very inside of that eye, um, just to give it a sense of realism. And just to show the pink of the, the pew's eye, it would be a nice little detail. to quickly show you here I'm just rinsing my brush off I'm removing the excess and then I'm reshaping the brush so the bristles and it come into a sharp point and that's so that when I'm creating those highlights it's a nice sharp edge in which to remove the pigment skin you just get a more crisp line if you just reform your brush a little bit and each time I'm making a highlight so you can see that I'm rubbing off the pigment then I'm removing the excess and dabbing it onto the kitchen roll. If you didn't dab off the excess, all you would be doing is sloshing paint from one place to another. So when you are creating a highlight, you want to make sure that you are dabbing away that excess, otherwise you might be left with a little bit of a mess. the way around this painting and I'm just going to pull out those little highlights and you can see I'm working in directions first, I'm chopping and changing but I'm always moving those marks downwards. Um, it's really important when you're working with fur to create the brush mark in the direction of the hair. That will just make it easier in the long run. Um, and I spoke earlier about dabbing off the excess pigment so that it doesn't kind of go slushy in a mess. You can also move the excess pigment that you're pulling off on that highlight and just add it on to different areas of the painting. So for example, you can pull out a highlight and using the brush loaded with the pigment that you've just removed, you can stroke it down and add some detail in another area. Um, this is good just to keep everything quite harmonious and just working at that detail. You'll also find that it's easier to create a highlight when there's more pigment on the paper, so the darker the area, the easier it will be to create the highlight uh, with little work. And also it's probably important to note that here my paper is not completely dry, so the pigment on the top is kind of open and malleable. Um, if it were completely dry, you might have struggled to pull out these highlights. Um, it's really sort of that stage where it's sort of absorbed but not completely dry and that's important. So we're going to start with the nose now. Um, the rest of the painting is dry and what we're going to do is create a wet wash just on the nose area where we want the pinks to go. I'm leaving out the very inside of that nostril, so where the really dark bit is. So I'm leaving that bit dry but the rest of it I'm going in with that wet wash. And first of all I'm going to add in that red and lemon yellow mix. Um, just in the corner, you can see the shadow in there. And I'm going to let that bleed out. Then what we're going to do is add in with some quite syrupy potter's pink just some spots and splodges and that's to give the impression of those dimples on that the very tip of the nose there. And you can see I'm just adding that pure potter's pink on top of that red and lemon yellow and that's going to bleed out nicely. And then just under the side of the mouth, so where it's quite dark, that's a mix of potter's pink, Payne's grey and burnt ember. I'm working wet into wet. I'm just going to swoop along a shadow and build up the colours as we go along. Um, it's really about keeping this nose area nice and loose and not creating too much of a tight painting. We want some nice light transitions going on. And we can do that by just stacking in the colour. And remember, work light to dark. So you want to start with your light colours and then plug in those darker shadows. Right on the underside there, that's a tiny little burnt ember, potter's pink. Um, and then a little bit of Payne's Grey too, just to create a nice shadow effect. Hey. So you'll notice what I'm doing as well, is when I'm putting in these darker colours, I'm just rinsing my brush off every so often, and then I'm just with a clear damp brush, I'm just swooping along the edges where the pigment is. And that's really to create a nice soft transition. Um, so I'm effectively popping in that colour and then just wiping away just around the edges for the damp 
uh, paintbrush and what will happen is the pigment will be removed but then slightly bleed back um, where that paper is wet from that damp swoop of a brush and that will create a really nice soft edge going around. Um, and that's really handy if you're working in a dark area that's next to quite a light area just to get those subtle transitions going on. And now what we're going to do is add in some of that nostril area and you'll remember it was dry um, because we didn't put any water on that first wash. So you're going to paint onto dry paper with a vermilion hue or a red colour and you can mix it in with a bit bit of burnt sienna just to warm it up. So you want to pop that quite intense colour down and then rinse your brush off and just with that uh, soft damp brush just wipe away and blend in those areas just to wipe off ex excess paint. And then we're going to stack in darker colours. So we're going to go in with vermilion hue and then a burnt amber to create a really dark intense colour just in a very deep bit of that nostril. Um, and this is all about building up those colours. So you start with a warm colour first, the reds, and then stacking your darker shadow. And all the while, just making that tiny little correction so it's bleeding out. That's a clean stamp brush and I'm just removing away the excess. And I'm relying on the fact that because the paper is slightly wet and the brush is damp, those pigments will just bleed slightly back out into a soft transition line. And just adjust as you go along. I'm just slightly warming up the edges there with that vermilion hue colour um, and it's really about gauging the painting and seeing where you are and just stacking up those colours, removing the edges when they're getting a little bit intense and really working with that colour intensity. darker colours and now we're going to go really dark. So using a Payne's grey and a burnt ember and the paper still slightly damp so you'll get a nice bleed, you want to stack in the very darkness of that nostril and then up into the eyeball too. So that's uh, wet on to dry um, and that's so we've got control and that the pigment doesn't bleed anywhere or sort of go everywhere in a sort of crazy manner. So wet on the dry paper for the eyeball and then just create a little bit of uh, depth into that very corner, into the cool sort of smiley face and up into the nostrils. You might find that your, because it's quite a dark colour stacked on that it might be quite heavy and sit heavy on the paper. So again just rinse your brush off and just blend out these colours with a damp brush and that should help these soft transitions go ahead. Um, it's really about sort of adding colours and then blending them back in um, and just working your way up, not trying to get everything on that paper all at once. It's really about stacking up those colours. And you can see there what I'm doing is just with that flat tip of the brush, I'm just pulling out some highlights and a bit of fur around the edge of the mouth just to make it look realistic. And I'm just there stacking in a tiny little bit of that burnt, uh, it's not burnt sienna, sorry, it's red and lemon yellow just on the tip of the nose just to blend in those two areas where it was white with the muzzle of the, of the mouth. So guys, we're getting there. 
What we're going to do is add in that tiny little heart detail on the very tip of the nose. So the nose is dry and that's so we can control the pigment and it's not going to go everywhere. So once that nose area is dry, I'm just going in with pure vermilion hue and I'm going to add a tiny little heart just because it's cute. And then I'm going to add onto that eye area, I'm just going to stack in some Payne's Grey again, but really syrupy just into the corner of the eyeball, um, just to give it a little bit more intense um, shape and give it a bit more form. Um, and these now are really about the final details, so I'm just making alterations, pulling out fur here and there, the odd highlight, and really making adjustments to the tone and colour to get everything in sort of a tip-top form. some pure burnt ember, really syrupy, almost straight out of the tube and just adding in some tiny um, last minute shadows to really make this painting pop. So you can see under there, under the eye area, I'm adding in that pure burnt ember. And what you'll find is because the painting is dry, you'll stack in this burnt ember and then you're going to need to soften it. So it's using the same technique, rinsing your brush off once you've got the colour in and then just going around the edge where the burnt amber is meeting the lighter colour and just swooshing a little bit of water across the top just to blend out those two areas so it doesn't sit too heavily on top of the painting. And now it's really about making those final last colour adjustments. Here I want to darken the neck area just to give the sense of that, that nose is protruding out of the, out of the body. Um, so I'm working on to dry paper but I'm softening out the edges with that water wash after. So go around your work and just see what needs to be added if you need to create more contrast anywhere. But remember, you can soften out the edges just by swooping over some water after you've put them in. And that will create a nice soft transition. The secret is to be gentle here. Build up slowly, don't go in too intensely all in one go. Otherwise you might have a little bit of a mess. In the final passes of this painting, um, I have adjusted the colour tone, so I put in that darker colour and now what I'm doing is I'm just using that same technique we used for the highlights at the very beginning, using a flat brush that I've rinsed in clean water and then I've removed the excess water by dabbing, I'm just putting out some highlights here and there. And then I'm making little adjustments, stacking in some darker colours just at the very roots of the original highlights. So this is really about getting those details in now. Um, adding darker bits and then adding more highlights if you're adding a different colour area. So work with your painting. And be soft and gentle, pull down little bits here and there and add tiny specks of hairs. Um, you're really in the last pass, so you've all done great. I am absolutely certain of it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can email me. It's info at lauradennis.co.uk. Happy painting!